Hi, this is Lesson 4 of Bootstrap Algebra, Domain and Range. We'll start like always uh, at Bootstrap World, Courses, Algebra, latest version, which is fall of 2020. And we're going to be in Domain and Range, but first let's just a, just a little recap, and you don't have to... to, to uh, follow along in your browser but we talked before last time about order of operations we introduced the uh, circles of evaluation uh, we also got to type into the we scheme editor a little bit and learn some terms around that so we really just wanted to uh, get uh, comfortable with that how the order uh, the uh, circles of evaluation are different than the PEMDAS rules um, of math. Um, they're more precise. They're much simpler. We use parentheses to control um, the order of operations and don't have to memorize this rule. And um, the we scheme way of doing it doesn't leave anything ambiguous. It's always exactly clear what the computer is going to do. And we practiced um, turning mathematical expressions into uh, circles of evaluation and then into uh, code. So hopefully you got a lot of practice from your um, uh, worksheets. And if you didn't get to all the worksheets, that's fine because you can uh, catch up and do some of these optional worksheets um, at the end of this lesson. So today we're going to talk about domain and range. Have that open to the materials. Go ahead and make sure that you have uh, WeScheme up and that you're logged into WeScheme. That should be good. Oh, good. Uh, I wasn't sure this picture was in here. Uh, so functions, if you remember from algebra, functions are like machines. So stuff goes in stuff comes out um, we want our machines to be reliable so we use that term function only when there is exactly one output so if you remember from your your algebra or pre-algebra class um, we have this thing called the vertical line test if we have a drawing of a function a graph of a function and we can see if this if a vertical line so an up and down straight up and down line passes through more than one point of the function uh, or on the the uh, the graph it's not a function so this curve would not be a function because the same y value is hit in three places and that corresponds to the idea of input so for one in, for a function for one input there's exactly one output well you can see if this input function for this x right here whatever this is there's more than one output. And so we're just going to, that might be a perfectly fine curve and an equation that made that curve, but we're only going to use the, the, the term function when there's one output. Turns out those are super useful in computer programs. And we can even think of a coffee maker. So a coffee maker is a machine, and when we put in grounds and water, we always expect to get coffee. We don't get spaghetti sometimes. We don't get other things. Uh, we get coffee. So this machine takes a certain type of input, always produces a certain type of output. And in math, we have specific terms we're going to use for those, just like uh, we have a specific definition for function. The input of what goes into a function is the domain, and what comes out is the range. I haven't ever been able to think of a, a great um, way of explaining that using kind of the normal English uh, terminologies for domain and range. Um, so it's just something that we have to memorize. Um, I mean, you can think of domain like your territory, um, you know, like a, a lion in the jungle may have a domain. So that's what goes into the function. That doesn't help me. I just really, we, I just have to memorize those. So if you need a flashcard for those, domain goes in, range comes out. We'll have a lot of practice for that. So uh, don't worry about it too much because you'll have practice from those terms. 
So in the Wii Scheme language, we're going to use something called a contract to keep track of our machines. So since you are the machine maker, we have to know what we're going to make. Um, kind of we make mistakes a lot of times when we're uh, unclear on exactly what it is we're asked to make. So contracts help us get clarity and think through what we want to make. So a contract has three important parts. The name, so it's, it's what we're going to call the function. What goes into the function, so what it consumes, which we just said is the domain. And what comes out of the function, what do we expect out of the function when we uh, after we run it? What, what, what kind of values does it produce? So contracts are general. Expressions are specific. It would be silly to buy a coffee maker that only works on one kind of coffee. So a coffee maker is a general type of machine. Even though its domain is coffee, it can be any kind of coffee. So a contract tells us that addition takes two numbers, but doesn't specify which numbers. And so we're going to use the term data type, or maybe even just type, for these things. So the this the contract for the plus, so that's its name, is going to have a, two different types go in, two numbers go in, and they're, they're, they have to be numbers, type of number and type of number, and we expect a number out. So this is the general contract that has data types telling what's going to happen. And then an expression, which is an example. So an expression would be an example would be another way to think of this expression is like we saw with circles of evaluation. It's got a function and it's the name. And then it's got a value of that is of a type number and a value that is of a type number. We're going to add 10 and 31. So the domain is 10 and 31. The, dom yep, the domain is 10 and 31, or numbers. The domain is numbers. And we expect a number out, which is going to be, what, 41. So there's another way to look at contracts. And um, we're going to look. You, you actually do have a contract uh, sheet in uh, your materials. And so we'll look at that in a minute. Um, so this is just a, a table version of this way of writing it. So we have a semicolon, which is a comment character in Wii Scheme. So it's really uh, useful in programming languages to be able to leave notes for yourself, to be able to leave notes for other programmers. And so we have some kind of symbol that tells the programming language, hey, this is for me, not for you. That's not for the computer. This is for people. And um, it's, it's a semicolon in Wii Scheme. So we do a semicolon so we can write the contract, which is for us, and then the name, the domain, which is numbers, and the range, which is numbers. So, and then here's an example. Plus one, two. And here's another example, square root. If you remember from algebra what a square root is, so there's a square root function in Wii Scheme, so the name of square root. And it only takes one number, right? We say, what's the square root of 16? And that is a number which is 4. So what does a contract for multiplication look like? Well, it has the name multiplication. Or if we're writing in a Wii scheme, we'll have the, the semicolon. But the contract itself is star, which is the, the function name for multiplication. And it takes two numbers in and gives a number out. Square root, we just looked at, so I'm not going to make you think about that too hard. It has a name, and it only has the uh, domain is only one number, and its range is a number. Now, let's find our contracts page. We don't have a link here to an individual contract page, but if you go back to the main page for fall 2020 and go down to student workbook, 
That's the entire PDF. Some of you may have printed out. Some of you may have printed out only the first few pages. Um, so go and find the very last two pages in this PDF. Can I try this? Yep. Very last two pages in this PDF. They're sideways. So I'm going to flip that. And they're just a, a, a notebook uh, so that you can keep track of uh, all your contracts for the um, for the the class. So go ahead and print these uh, last. You can print one, two, or or all four pages, um, whatever you want to print. But um, today we'll we'll just use one, and you can just print them when you need them. Um, so uh, or you can just keep track in a notebook. All we're gonna do is write down semicolon name colon domain arrow function so if you want to write that in a separate notebook that's fine too but you can also take the time now to pause and print that out i'm going to go back to domain and range so take a very short amount of time like two minutes when i say say pause and go to the contracts page and write the contract for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And uh, here's some examples so you remember what you need to, to put in there. Um, so go ahead and pause now and do this. Great. It's good practice to just start writing contracts. All right. Think really quickly. You don't even have to pause. Um, what's wrong with this contract? This, this looks like it's in the form of a contract but something's not right about it. And it's that contracts have data types. So this has the value of three and a value of four and a value of seven, but for a contract, it needs to be the data type, which is number, number, and number. So think about the difference between a data type, which is what we call a type of a number, and a specific example, which is 17. That'll come up all the time. It, it confuses, uh, or, or it's just a, a distinction that we all have to make as programmers with which, whether we're talking about specific values or a data type. So there are other data types. Here is some more data types. Um, so, so strings is one. That's just the traditional name of it. Um, it's uh, some letters with, uh, and it could be numbers, could be anything you can type on your keyboard. You can go in between these double quotes, and that's the type. So just like um, we saw with numbers, where we were able to type a number into our REPL, and it's it's you know, the, the REPL gives us back. It's, a, it's essentially a little one, one character program. Well, we can do the same thing with strings. I'm going to type a double quote and you'll see it finished the double quote for me because we need two, we need two sets, right? So I'm going to watch that again. I'm going to backspace one time and I'm just going to hit the double quote, you know, shift quote one time and it put the double quote and another double quote and it put my cursor right in the middle. So when I start typing, I'm typing in the middle. I don't have to put in the ending quote. If I do, that's okay because it knows to just uh, not put another one in, but let me do it. So you can uh, just type the, the ending double quote. You can put the arrow key left and right like I'm doing now, or even hit enter from there and it will enter the entire line. And just like with numbers, it just gives me back whatever I typed in. So one thing to think about is the difference between a string that has a number in it and a number three. Those are two different data types because we said anything with double quotes is a string. So this is a string. It happens to have a value inside it that looks like the number three, but that's not a number as far as the computer is concerned. It's a string. And um, we can see that because I can type in 3a and that's fine but if i type in 3a that's not a number so what's it going to do it's an error and it thinks i have i'm trying to make a variable which we'll learn what that is called 3a so it thinks it's a name because it's no longer a number right so 
go ahead and pause now and type a few strings into the interactions area. It's okay if you get errors. Um, just try to read the error output and um, do a few string examples. So go ahead and pause now for just two or three minutes. All right, now we can start doing some more fun stuff with our circles of evaluation. Last time we, we did circles of evaluation with arithmetic, um, which I told you we were going to try to get away from arithmetic. It's always a good place to start, but we're now done. Uh, it's not we haven't outgrown arithmetic. We'll still use arithmetic, but we're not going to be stuck with that being the only thing we know how to program. So we can put anything we want into a circle of evaluation. So here is uh, multiplication. So its name is star. It's got a, a, a domain of 10 and negative 4. Uh, it's got it's got inputs uh, of 10 and negative 4, a domain of two numbers. Let's look at this guy. A star. It's got a domain of apparently a number, a string, and a string. I wonder what it's going to give us. So the name, again, is star. How many things are in its domain? One, two, three. What are the types? Number, string, string. So what do you think the range will be? Well, we could say it's going to be a star. Uh, but again, that would be an example of something, not the data type. And you won't know what the data type is, except there is a clue on this uh, slide, which is image functions. So a good guess for what type is going to come out of this is an image. Convert this circle to code and type it in. What do you get back? What do each of the inputs mean? So I'm going to do that for us. What do we say? 50 solid blue. So we had, I'm going to just flip back and forth uh, pretty quickly. So if we are eating this from the top, we cross a line and we had star, it's the function name. And then we go left to right, 50 solid blue. 50 solid blue. I'm just going to hit enter. Cool. So it's a star. Um, and then you know, I cannot keep from uh, just changing little things to see what happens. I'm going to use the alt, alt and go up arrow so I don't have to type it in again. If you remember that, you can go Alt, push the Alt key, and then up arrow. I'm assuming that we can make a tiny star with five. That is super tiny. I'm going to do Alt, up arrow, uh, up arrow twice so I get my 50 back. I bet if it knows blue, it knows green. It knows red. And just like with the game when you want to see what happens so you die, I don't know what it wants here other than solid. So I'm just going to type in some junk. And it nicely you know, gives an error. That's what I expected. It's just like dying in a game. It just gives me an error. But it does tell me, oh, expects a style solid or outline. So in addition to solid, we can do outline or an opacity value. Let's skip that for now. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to, um, to that. But uh, let's do it the outline thing. So I'm going to do up arrow. OK, cool. All right, so play around with the star for a little bit. Uh, actually, you have some other stuff to do. Play around with a bunch of stuff. So let's look at number 17, page 17, which uh, has been pointed out. If you use the um, PDF version of the book, sometimes these page numbers don't match up. So um, they, the, the materials are this, uh, almost, almost exactly the same as they have been for, for quite a while. But um, they must have slid in a new page because the, the page numbers are off by one or two. But uh, the, the names are the same. So in your PDF, look for Exploring Image Functions, um, or just click on this link to 17. 
And here's the one we've been working with, except uh, it's going to be black. And it looks like it's telling us that the range is an image. And um, try to guess what else might you find. So in here, go ahead and guess some other type of shape. So this is a shape, right? So it looks like we are taking um, some kind of shape as the, the, the function name. So guess some other shapes. Um, they won't all necessarily have the same um, domain. So read the error messages, see what it says, and see what other types of uh, functions you can produce. So just find four more functions, write a circle of evaluation, uh, just sketch out what it the image it produces, and then also it's going to tell you some other ones that you probably won't, uh, you wouldn't have guessed. Um, but after you do, after you find some, some simple, straightforward functions on your own, it's giving you three others to try and, um, yeah, try to figure out just based on, uh, the error messages, how they get used. So that is your assignment for, no, is that, we're going to do that now. Let me see. Yes. Why don't you pause for, um, you know, it's fine if this takes 10 or 15 minutes for you to play around. So go ahead and pause now and uh, go ahead and explore in WeScheme and do this page. Great. I hope you had fun doing that and learning some new functions. All right. Remember, we're still talking about. Um, so we, we learned we learned a few things about WeScheme, but let's let's review what we know about contracts. So based on star, now that we know some more about star, so it has three things it's in its domain. And then its name is star. Three things in its domain: a number and two strings. What does each of them tell us about the star? Well, we saw that looks like this first one's going to be the size of the star. The second one is what they called a style. I didn't know what to call that, but I already see in the error message the style. And clearly the third thing is a color. What happens if I don't give a star those things? Well, if I don't, uh, we didn't, didn't do that error message, but you probably saw it when you did yours. What happens if we do... Well, let's see. Let's do an empty one first. All right, it expects a style, but we we got nothing. Um, what if I just leave out? I'm doing Alt up arrow. Do I leave that out? Interesting. So if I leave that out and hit Enter, and you probably saw this, it actually gives me a, a carriage return. It knows that star expects three things. So since I haven't given it the three things yet, it thinks that I want to do that enter as formatting, and it's waiting for me to do the other things. And if I hit enter again, it's just going to give me another new line. And I have to scroll down to see it because I'm at the bottom of the screen. So it doesn't like that. So it's, I'm not going to be able to just give it two. What if I give it a number? Okay, it's not liking that. I'm going to start again on that. Star 50. Let's just start blank. Red. Uh, I was wrong about uh, why it was giving me that. It doesn't know what the star has. Um, I it, if I'm not if I'm, if I'm inside the closing parentheses, it's going to use um, my carriage return as formatting. Looked like. All right, so I'll start star. Okay, so, all right, well, let's look at this one. Start that I typed was not defined, so we just have to read what it says. Now, start expects five or three, but I only gave two. So that's what it's going to tell us if we don't have one. If I do give it those things, then I get a star. 
square, hopefully it was one of the ones you discovered, it has the same domain. What does that represent? Square, okay. Well, 50 is going to be size again. Outline is going to be uh, the style again. And red's the um, color. So it looks like they represent the exact same things in square as they did in star. So can different functions have the same domain? Clearly, yes. We looked at uh, plus and minus. It, did those have the same domain? They both take numbers as input. Um, Square and star. They both take a number and two strings uh, as their domain. So what's an example of two math functions that have the same domain and range? So you can think of other examples, but plus and minus are really simple ones to think about. So um, your uh, Homework before the next session is going to be page 18. So let's look at page 18. All right, so pay attention on this to what it's asking you. We're doing it's, it's a little bit uh, what we call these nested functions, and when we think of these as, as circles of evaluation, they just have one circle in type of an in, inside of another, but it, it, pay attention to what it's asking you. Only asking for the that jumped. Only asking for the name of the function being used. So there's two functions being used. So you could go ahead and say the two names of them, but don't um, get bogged down in too much more than what it's asking you to do. Um, this one's only asking for the domain of the outermost function. So when you think of circles of evaluation. You'll have an inside circle and an outside circle. So what's the domain of the outermost function being used? And we'll go over these next time so um, you can check your answers. Uh, I don't think I use this word, argument. So the um, in the contract, the domain is the data type of what goes in. The arguments are the actual values that go in. So I'll go ahead and um, so so how many arguments does plus take? Well, it's the same as how as how many are in the domain, right? So how many uh, arguments does plus take? Even without looking at the function. We've been talking about that, but you can also see what the actual arguments are of this one. There's one argument, and there is another argument. So that's uh, homework for next time. And then finally, we have a, just a, a few other um, worksheets, um, which you actually may have already done some of, no, these are all new. So um, identifying parts of expressions. It's going to talk about the arguments. Again, how many. So the, do these other optional um, worksheets for talking about expressions and contracts uh, before uh, going on to the next lesson. So while we're here, let's use this for to, to review. Uh, make sure we, we did hit all of the terms. We talked about contracts a bunch. We talked about data types. So here's how that's spelled out. And again, we'll, sometimes we'll just talk about, we'll just say type. And when we mean data type, and sometimes you will see this with a space in between as two words. Domain we talked about a lot. You've seen a lot of error messages the more you play with we scheme functions. Image, we did. Uh, the, all of those image functions produced images as the range, number, range, string. We talked about strings and we scheme always in double quotes. We looked at the algebra definition of a function, and um, those are the kinds of mathematical objects that we're mostly concerned with uh, in 
in, or they play a big part in um, doing any kind of computations because they have that property where when we put in a number, we only can get one thing out. We looked at contract. We looked at all of those image functions. Feel free to see what all kinds of weird stuff you can do with images now that you know how to make them. And then don't forget to do the um, page 18 and then these three additional uh, worksheets um, just so you really get that whole thing of contract under your fingers. And all this is going to play into your game. Um, uh, even And we'll, we'll go back and forth between sessions where we talk a lot about the game and we talk a lot about these underlying principles that we really need in order to make our game. And then in just a few weeks, we'll be putting those together every week. We will be um, spending time in we scheme really concentrating on how your game works but you need to understand these uh, these basic principles of we scheme before you can um, you know really get mastery of, uh, over controlling your game so thanks and um, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson